We just finished yesterday reading about Indian Point or Native American Point. Now, I told you that this chapter was going to be a little bit of a surprise because it was named after a musical instrument, one that we heard in the Philharmonic, and that would be a new violin. And that is the name of chapter number nine. It is a new violin. All right, let's begin. After supper, a few days later, the children sat resting in the doorway of the barn. Listen, said Vi Violet suddenly. Since Violet never said anything, suddenly everyone looked at her in surprise and they listened. Then they heard the sound of a violin. Who can that be? asked Violet. Let's find out, said Henry. Watch ran right to Captain Daniel's head and the four children followed. There sat Joe in the doorway playing a real violin. He did not stop when he saw the children. They stared at him and watched his fingers fly as he played a very fast piece. When Joe finished, Benny said, I didn't know you had a violin. Oh, please, please play it again. What did you learn to play, cried Violet. Could I hold it for, for just a minute? Jesse and Henry were too surprised to speak. This was not at all like Violet. When Joe handed the violin to her, Violet took it and put it under her chin. Play something, said Joe. Oh, I can't play it, said Violet. I'd just like to hold it for a minute under my chin. Do you mind, Joe? No, no, said Joe. But do you want me to show you how to play it? Not now, said Violet. You play some more. Here's a picture of Violet holding that violin. She gave the violin back as if she had played one all of her life. Joe did play some more, first a slow piece and then a faster one. But Jesse and Henry were not watching Joe, they were watching Violet. She stood without moving all the time that Joe was playing. Joe was watching Violet too. He was sure she could learn to play well because she seemed to like the violin so much. And by the way, that's something that's true. We do best what we enjoy doing, right? If we are, if we do something well, we enjoy doing it. Wouldn't you agree with that? I think it's true. That's what Joe saw in Violet, that she enjoyed this, she was interested in it, and therefore he knew that with some practice and work, she could do it just like her slogan, big dreams plus hard work equals success. And it's true, it does. When the family went back to the barn at last, they were all thinking of Joe's wonderful playing. That night when Jesse went to sleep, it seemed to her that Joe played such a sad piece that Violet cried. But when Jessie woke up, she knew that it was real crying because she heard, for Violet was crying softly. Jessie got up at once. What is the matter, she asked, falling on her knees beside Violet's bed. Why, why are you crying? I, I, I will want, want to learn to play the violin, said Violet, starting to cry all over again. Of course you shall. I know Grandfather will buy you a violin and Joe can teach you how to play it. It's not that. You see, I, I want to practice. And I want to practice a lot and it's so selfish to go off and practice all by myself when I ought to be helping. Henry came in with a flashlight. Oh my goodness, cried Jessie. What can I say? You talk to her. I heard most of it, said Henry. She thinks she's selfish to practice when we come down here to have a good time together. Is that it? That's just it, said Jessie. Now, Violet, look here, said Henry. You couldn't be selfish if you tried. We all want you to learn to play the violin. Most people don't even like to practice, you know. Henry's little talk with Violet made her feel much better. Soon they were all talking again and even laughing a little. Shh, we'd better be quiet. We don't want to wake Benny. He would certainly howl. Oh, by the way, that was page 100. Hmm. The children left Violet feeling happy again and thinking about the little violin her grandfather surely would buy for her. The next day, Joe got Captain Daniel to telephone Mr. Alden. He listened to the story and thought about his own beautiful violin carefully packed away. Mm. Another interesting piece of the puzzle. Mr. Alden himself has a violin, but does he play? That's the question. 
But he said to Captain Daniel, certainly Violet must have a violin. The only trouble is that I am too busy this morning to buy one for her. Joe thinks he could pick one out for her, said Captain Daniel. His playing is just wonderful. Hmm, that Joe is a very interesting man, replied Mr. Alden. I'll have a talk with him when I come over. Give the money for the violin, Captain, and let him buy one if he thinks he can. When Joe came back to the Alden Island with the little violin, Violet was waiting for him on the dock, and Joe was sure that Violet could someday be a wonderful player. So he had bought her a fine but yet beginning violin. The rest of the family came flying down to see if Joe had had any luck. After, after they had all seen the violin, Violet shut the box. I don't think it likes to be outdoors, she said. I don't think so either, agreed Joe. Let's take it to the hut and I will give you your first lesson. I'll go with you, said Benny. Do you think that's a good idea, Benny going to the lesson? Hmm. No, you'd better stay here on the dock with us and fish, said Henry quickly. Are you gonna fish? Asked Benny. Yes, said Henry, who had not thought of fishing until that very minute. Just think, Benny, we've been here by the ocean four weeks and we haven't had a single fishing trip yet. Suddenly, Henry found that he himself wanted to go fishing very badly. You will find fish lines and bait in an old box under the dock, called Joe. Luck was surely with Henry. He baited a hook with a clam, and then he let down a long line and gave the end to Benny. And almost at once, Benny began to yell and pull away on his line, hand over hand. Good, cried Henry, when Benny finally landed the fish on the dock. What a, what a wonderful fisherman you are. Look at that big whale that Benny caught. Man, that's big fish. Huh. I'll take it off the hook for you and you and put it on a string. What a big one, said Jesse. Don't catch him any more of those, Benny. We'll be eating fish for a week. The children sat on the dock for a long time, but nothing happened. I wish I could catch one, said Jesse. Another fish like the one Benny caught and we would have enough for dinner. And I know just how to bake them with some special dressing. I'm getting a little tired of this, said Henry. I'm gonna stop. I'm not. My grandfather told me fishing takes lots of time. He's right too. He did, he did take you fishing once, didn't he? I remember I wanted to go, but I had to go do some schoolwork. He told me if I think I won't catch a fish, then I will catch a fish for sure. And so when I do catch one, I'm surprised, said Benny. I see, said Henry, sitting down again. He tied his own line to the dock. And because he really did not think he would get any fish, he looked out at the boats. Henry had just sat down when Benny shouted, Hurry! You've got a fish! Don't you see your line pull? Benny jumped for Henry's line, and before anyone could help him, he pulled in another fish, just like the first one. Oh, Jesse, isn't this something? They're twins, I guess, said Benny. I guess you are certainly the fisherman of this family, all right, said Henry. You and Grandfather, I don't even know when there is a fish on my own line. Henry put his string through the mouth of the other fish, and Henry carried them proudly home. Joe can clean them for me, said Benny. Oh, I can do that, said Henry. I can clean fish, even if I can't catch them. <clears throat> Cut them in half, Henry, will you? called Jesse. I will go in and start the dressing at once. Benny would not leave his twin fishes even for a minute. After Henry had washed them, Benny brought them to Jessie and stayed by her side while she put them in a pan. And Jessie piled the dressing made of bread, onions, melted butter, and salt on four large pieces of fish. I'm getting hungry just thinking about those fish that Benny caught. I guess they'll be good, said Benny as the oven door shut. He sat by the oven with the dog until Jesse said that it was dinner time. Isn't it always interesting when you're making food, how dogs are always around? I've got two dogs named Lucy and Ethel. Whenever I'm making something, they're always right down by my feet, hoping that I either drop something or that I take pity on them and give them some food. <laughs> Violet came in and she put her violin carefully away, but she did not talk about the lesson. What do I smell? It's the twins. They're in the oven baking. <laughs> twins? What do you mean? Jessie opened the oven door and took out the pan to show her. They are done. We can each have half of a fish, she said. And Benny shall have his first because he, the fisherman, caught them. She put the fish carefully on four plates. <clears throat> I wish grandfather could see us eating your fish, Benny, said Henry. You're a very good fisherman. 
He's coming to visit us tomorrow, said Violet. He telephoned to Captain Daniel and said he would be over tomorrow if it was all right. It's all right with me, said Henry. And me, said Jessie. But what shall they have to eat? I suppose we ought to have some meat for dinner. I think Grandfather would like to eat just like we do, said Violet. Maybe Grandfather and I could go fishing, said Benny, but we might not catch anything. Grandfather won't have time to go fishing, Benny, said Henry. Let's have dinner from our own garden. Remember those little vegetables we had in the old boxcar days, Benny? Oh, yes, little vegetables with melted butter. Let's have vegetables. Mm-mm, good. That's a better idea. Then we'll be sure to have some dinner, said Jesse. They all laughed. And that's the end of chapter number nine. Well, if you see, look, you can tell we're over halfway done with the book. Wow. Now, I am going to tell you the chapter, uh, the title next, it actually kind of foreshadowed about it uh, a few pages ago when it talked about Grandfather's Visit. And that is the chapter title of chapter 10, Grandfather's Visit. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you just have a better one tomorrow.